It was taking you somewhere else. He was exporting me outside the state. <laughs> He was about to go and sell you for parts. I'm telling you. <laughs> Takumba. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Shallow on the cup. Nah, you can't say that. You have to say I'm move at the cup. Alright, cool. <laughs> you think hey this guys. is uh, what's that? What's that show? VP in the cup. VP in the cup. <laughs> Them nice baby nonsense. <laughs> cool, okay, that we're gonna be good <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, cool. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the I Move Back podcast with me, Shalawa here. Dr. P or G in the house, you know yes. how it goes. Welcome, welcome to another episode. Doctor, how are you today? You know what? I'm good, you know. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling bubbly. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I had a bit of sippy sippy. Sippy you know, sippy. So Why are you excited us with the first minute? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Everybody has a sippy sippy. You get sip some wine, you get some water, you get sip some tea. You know I finished saying? 40 days of fasting, okay? Really? So, yeah. 40 days of Oh, yeah. Clean. Do- yeah, I did 40 days. You know days. what? I rate that, you know. How's yeah. that going? Um, I feel like it really helped my system. Okay. Even like people that knew me said I looked better. It helped with like weight management. Because you know Nigeria would just expand your waistline. That's the thing. Oi, my mom misses me. <laughs> my mom misses me telling me I'm fat. <laughs> now, if, when your mom is messaging you telling you you're fat, listen, you're fat. Like, you need to go to the gym. <laughs> Fab, I'm going to be honest, yeah. And you see the camera, yeah? The camera expands your waistline times two as well. <laughs> So whatever you thought you were, it looks even worse on camera. Hey, like, yeah. No, nah, big camera shy, fam. It's cool. It's cool the way. Yeah, we're camera shy, but yeah, man, I'm okay. Like, I'm in good spirits. Uh, I think. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I think I had a positive week. Okay. Yeah. Things are looking on the up. Um. But you know Nigeria, yeah. One week you think everything's going well, then everything will just crash on your head the next I'm week. I'm telling you. I'm so telling I, I don't know. I don't want to say too much. Right nah, now. you just you just everything we're coasting. We're, you're we're coasting. coasting. That's that you guys just say you're coasting because yeah. don't get too happy in Nigeria. Don't get too Damn. sad. <laughs> Do you find that a lot of Nigerians, yeah, overpromise and underdeliver? Work-wise? Oh my god. <laughs> That's why if you want to make it here, do the opposite. Exactly. Because like people will be so shocked, like, oh raw, like this guy is really Exactly, you know what I'm saying? yeah. Because that uh, over promise other delivers everywhere. Like, oh let, let me tell you what happened. Some guy came to tint my car. So he knew what he did. He tint three four all the four windows, but one of them he did it so bad, didn't it? And then he, obviously I, the, the window side the tint side peeling off. Jesus and I was driving. I called I called this guy. It's been five weeks now. He hasn't come back to fix it. This is terrible. The tints started peeling off. See, I was driving and it was pe- you know when them, those people can see you in the traffic and them, <laughs> they could have seen me through the tints. <laughs> they were just knocking the window like, yeah, yeah I can see you, nigga. <laughs> so now, nah. <laughs> so now, nah, literally, bro, like, nah, the service in Nigeria, people are just not. not Do you know what it is? On. Yeah, I feel like. 99% of people don't have pride in their work or attention to detail. Yeah. Because they're in survival mode, yeah. They're doing like bad jobs at once. Mm. And they're just like, so even me, like, you know, obviously, guys, I have a work husband in the studio. He's Ooh. so amazing. He's like, what's his name? What's his name? Kunle. Shout out to Kunle. Shout yeah. out to Kunle. Kunle, Kunle, Kunle is... and Salewa, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Kunle is second to none. And aside from Kunle, there's one other person in my two years that I've met, like a local Nigerian that's really serious about what they do. So I don't know know like what's in the water mm. i don't know if you've experienced it in your industry yeah I've, i think yeah definitely it's, there's people are just not serious um but you know sometimes i'm not serious oh my God. <laughs> so there's one time yeah somebody asked for like so somebody asked for something in it like mm-hmm. they want me to sign something yeah but like me i am the slowest person to sign anything mm. i take my time like I want to see how much you really want me to sign that thing. Oh my God. Look at the toxicity. <laughs> Look, but is it because of is it because the signing means money's getting dropped? Or yeah, just, it means money's getting sense, dropped. Yeah, it yeah, means yeah. commitment. It means a lot of other things. I, okay. I'm fine with that, but I just want to make sure. Like, I've I've thought about it for a while. Mm. Even if it's like everything in the contract, good. I've, yeah. I've thought about it for a while. I've mm. read through it, 
I've digested it. I've I've consulted a couple of people, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. mediation, everything, right? Mm-hmm. You just you've just made sure you're you're good. Yeah. Before I sign it. So maybe that's we I delay when it comes to that. Okay. But anything else, t- top notch work, everything else, top yeah, notch work. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I'm I'm a workaholic. I feel like it's even like my biggest strength and weakness. Mm. So it's so hard, like being in Nigeria. In fact, I've come to the conclusion, yeah. You see Nigeria and Lagos coming to spend money, but to work here. I'm not even going to start encouraging people to do that. <laughs> Maybe for a little while, but just don't have your Nigerian businesses being, de- like, be dependent on your Nigerian businesses. Yeah, yeah, sure. You need something, other things. You need other things, yeah. Things, yeah. yeah. You know what, what? One thing I wanted to address today, yeah, is kind of the, the, the Uber drivers in Nigeria. Oh, my And the fir- I want to start off with this. Why is the Ubers in Nigeria so <laughs> dirty? No, 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 but for real, like, out of everywhere in the world I've been to, Nigerian Ubers are Bangers. so dirty. Bangers and mash. <laughs> You know, no, like they, they literally putting these cars together. Yeah, like. No, 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 no. You see this topic yet? Yeah, something so insensitive to me. I don't because you know, like in London, we're so used to taking Ubers everywhere. Fam. When you come to Nigeria, you think you're going to get an Uber. You're getting on a bank. In like, London. You, I can, you skim us dirty. London, you can get a certain, there's always a certain standard, but at least you can order your Uber Lux or whatever. Mm. Especially in my area, shout out to Northwest. You know, we're bougie. So we even have, even without Uber Lux, it's still a nice standard, you know? But you see this Lagos, there's been times when Uber's come to pick me up. Even I've said, sorry, it's okay. <laughs> I cannot get into the vehicle. <laughs> Don't worry, it's okay. Just 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 get back to where you came from. I had an Uber that came, it looked like it just came out of a fire. No. I said it came out of a fire. It looked <laughs> like it just... burnt all the pain away and there's no pain no, in the body. No, that's exactly, no, no, no. That's exactly what, my body was itching me when I saw that shit. <laughs> nah, I was like, no, that's nah. funny, that's funny. No, nah, the standard is, I've been through it. Right have, has any Uber, Uber broken down when you're in the Uber? Huh? <laughs> Fam. So the first time, this was like within a few months of when I got here. Mm. It was like, you know, there was a curfew during lockdown in Nigeria. Oh yeah, I hate that curfew because yeah. I, I thought I could party all night and then I used to come back come at 12. Yeah, like, yeah, 12, yeah. So uh, my friend was like, come over. And I don't know who told my coconut head to go at like 11.30 p.m. So I called an Uber. I, what I, kind of friend was it? Huh? You need to really <laughs> relax with those other questions. <laughs> Guys, opportunity for a new co-host on <laughs> <Uber podcast. laughs> Put your applications in on the website. Anyways, you, you got there at 12.30. I got there. I got, I got a lot of, You need to relax <laughs> <laughs> So then like, the Uber, imagine, yeah. So it's from VI to Oniru. Outside mm. Sheraton, the car goes. <laughs> and it just. <laughs> it just. you <laughs> do. It just goes. <laughs> and it backs up. I'm like, God almighty, because I'm still fresh. <laughs> I'm still fresh in the city. I'm like, what's what going on? Do? He's like, sorry, ma, we ran out of petrol. <laughs> I said, Lord. I said, so you couldn't you get just... a petrol before you picked you up. I, I said, I said, did you not? Did you not? I said, it doesn't end there. So I'm fuming. I'm like, so I have to stand on the street like mm. a damn runs baby. I had to go and wait for another Uber. <laughs> like I was really pissed off. Called another one. I was about to open the door to get out of the vehicle. Guess what? what? There was no door handle. He said, let me come out the car and open the door for you. You see one thing that pisses me off? I think not just Uber drivers, but Nigerians don't use that in- intuitive, you know, like the intuition. Mm. Like things, they'll be like, okay, you know what? They will be f- saving things for the last minute. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. Like yep. you could have just stopped by a petrol station, yep, yep, got yep. petrol in your car and then go and pick it up. Facts, facts, but facts. my man said, now nah, let me risk it. Let me go there, drop her off and then... Facts. And then think about getting better after. You think that ends there? Do you want to see the other day? What happened? I've got a video. I'm, I'm too ashamed. You know, that that what, what happened to me the other day? Mm. I said, no, I really need to consider my whole life. What happened? I was on the way to um, P's house, yeah? Mm. And on... What P? What P? Um, my P. He's, okay, cool, he's, cool, he's, cool. He's, um, Yeah, not your P. My P. Oh, all right, cool. <laughs> and then, like... <laughs> and then, like, imagine, yeah? On the middle of Lecky Epe Expressway. I've never been brought so low in my entire life. The car broke down. <sighs> and in front of Lake, for the people watching, your Lake Expressway is the main road that collects everything. It's a damn motorway. It's a, it's a dual. Ca- it's, it's like M25. It's imagine, M25. Imagine your car. Your Uber yeah. driver crashing the M25 in the M25 in Lagos. I couldn't. I said, do you know what? Yeah, I said, no, 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 no. God, do what you need to do, but I can't be living like this anymore. Nah. He put on the hazard lights, had to pull to the side, and I had to call another one to pick me up on the expressway. 
right on the express you see way. what happens when you don't do sugar daddy lifestyle yeah <laughs> and you don't and you try to focus on your hustle and be a hard working babe <laughs> you'll be taking Ubers up and down <laughs> and your life will be put at risk I can't live like but this but I anymore. know that some girls out there getting cars bought for their exactly house exactly. rent paid honestly <laughs> this straightforward lifestyle is not easy but I'm just gonna like face my front and do it because that was I, I, I walked out the car I was like no 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 I can't live like this anymore I actually can't live like this anymore. no the funniest one year was when we, me, you, to, one of my boys. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We, went, we went somewhere there. One of my two of my friends went somewhere. Hmm. We went to get, we'll find a shawarma <laughs> late at night. Yes. Anyways, there's one shawarma outside, like SIP, which is everybody says a nice shawarma. Luckily, yeah. we couldn't get that because it wasn't open that day. So we went to another shawarma spot. This shawarma spot just looked a bit too ruggy ruggedy. We, we looked at him and we said, nah, we, we're, not said, not today, <laughs> we're not eating here. We're not eating here. We're not eating here. So we were just saying, you know, my friends are still getting chawarma. We were trying to leave. So um we got to we got to the um oh yeah, I ordered I ordered the Uber and then S into the other Uber. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so obviously I was, she was there, I was just I saw her legs outside and this Uber driver was moving forward. So I was just thinking. No, 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 I just the way I ran back, I was like, no, that's not the Uber, that's not the Uber, that's the wrong Uber. Fam, <laughs> I saw him running towards me. I thought he was gonna say, nah, them man are ready to leave. No. That's how I was getting kidnapped in the vehicle. <laughs> she was literally Seriously. I, I I was so like I couldn't you know when you're in just that moment, you couldn't believe what's going yeah, on. Yeah, you you were panicked. You rich, you were running, 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 running. I was like, what's going on? And the guy was just edging forward, yeah, edging he was forward edging, the and your legs were outside the Uber. Exactly. I was nah, I was I was I was about to go off that day, boy. But yeah. I have never been I'm telling you, yeah, the, the Ubers in Nigeria are the ghetto. The ghetto. I've actually been almost kidnapped before. So you know the palms in Oniru, the shopping center, shop mm. right as well. Mm. It was the first time I was going there when I first came and I put it in and then we were at, you know when you do the roundabout we take when we're going to the mainland? You know when yeah, we missed the road yeah, yeah. the other day? So we were there and he started reversing on that on that bridge and bare man started knocking on the boot and they're like, what are you doing? So I started panicking. You know when you just sit in the back, mm. listen to your music and zone out. When it, when <laughs> Don't do that in Nigeria. You can't do that here. <laughs> when it started beating on the boot, I'm like, oh God, how far? Like, what's going on, yeah? Mm. I looked at his phone. Where he's taking me is 46 minutes away. When I put the palms on my phone, it's, it's like 15, 15 minutes, minutes here from that junction. Yeah, yeah. So he was taking you somewhere else. He was exporting me outside the state. <laughs> <laughs> he was about to go and sell you for parts. I'm telling you. <laughs> Takumba. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you, I had to give him my phone and said, you better literally use my phone to take me to where I'm going. No. From that day, I realized you can't, you have to have your eyes. You can't even rest in this country at all. No, nah, you have to be hypervigilance. Oh, hypervigilance. Oh, fam. my All days. time, all it's time. so draining. It's so draining. It's mad, it's mad. mad. Another time, yeah, one came to pick me up. You'll never believe this shit. Robert. By the time I got to the vehicle, guess what this motherfucker had done? What? He locked himself outside of his own car. <laughs> outside of his own car so he thought the, you were going to be there with the keys, trying to with get the keys the inside <laughs> no I'm, I've never seen that happen in life does that even is that even possible it's the type of cars that uses the bangers <laughs> and mash <laughs> like what? he locked himself up so you were just there figuring out how to get <laughs> <it>. <laughs> oh, you don't understand yet I'm telling you poverty doesn't suit me at all you know I did yeah I did my good Samaritan shit I went on YouTube that's mm. the beauty of having dates I went on YouTube I looked at the car model I typed in locked outside the car I, sh I there's a place basically under most vehicles I think every vehicle there's somewhere underneath the car mm. there's a lever and I shouldn't tell the people this because I'll use it for the wrong, wrong things to do but there's a lever you can pull that opens the boot and then from the boot of every car, you can get access to the vehicle. Oh, yeah, yeah, So, true, I, true. so I just showed the security guard at my place, like, can you just help him? No, you're this? a gangster, you know. How yeah, do you yeah. know this? Yeah, man. You know. You've been doing, you've been doing yeah, you on the London, breed situations. You know London, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody went through that hood princess face. <laughs> Wait, did a man hide you in the boot and he had to figure out to get out? Hide me in the boot, you're not serious, man. <laughs> no, that's bad, that's no, bad. But it's just they'll throw you in different situations. Different situations, you know, different situations. Now, nah, I've, I've, there's one time, yeah, someone just come to see me and at the time, um, I think the guy just like, halfway through, I think he, he had to, like, I think his car was not working well, he had to sort something out. Mm -hmm. So he literally dropped her like halfway through and said, I can't move anymore. Stop the Uber here. For like what? imagine you're getting an Uber and then they say, we've stopped the Uber here. We can't move anymore. For what? Like what's the reason? He wanted to go and 
do something else. Some people they called him for something he's else. He's actually mad. I was like, he's actually when, very <laughs> when I heard the story, I, I just t- told the person on the phone. I was like, you gotta figure where I have to get another <laughs> Uber. <laughs> Did you say you're on your own? I was you're like, evil, you're my own fam. <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah, it's it's mad. You, they, they just they just be creating up different scenarios. And but the funniest thing, I always tip Uber, so like I round it up to Nerex five hundred maximum, right? Yeah. So. I'm always expecting a good service so that you can get a tip. And then sometimes you don't get a good service and you just, just, oh, you just get pissed yeah, off. No, 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 no. I, when I first came, I don't know who, you always called me Santa Claus. I don't know who I thought I was. I was tipping every single driver, yeah. Who sent me? Like, what did they, what did they, even yeah, what did they told do? Me, Five star is enough for them, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, like, why are you me, they actually earn peas as well. So I was like, if you want to be giving people money, it's not Uber drivers. They're mm. actually even sort of considered to be yeah. earning a decent amount. It's people for that real. are even like below them. 2K, 3K each trip. They probably do like 100 trips a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently they can, they can clean up 100, over 100K, mm. like, you know. Um, a month and stuff. There was one time I was coming back late um, from somewhere and um, I got in the car and do you know what this guy said to me? Oh. Can you come and sit in the front with me? No I said, he wants to t- sit in the front for wait, a Wait, 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 slow down. That just blew through my head. He said, you come and sit in the front with him. I'm telling you, yeah, I've actually been through it. Did he, this did is why you guys need to... Did he put his hand on your leg when he was driving? Yeah, just, just, <laughs> I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you, doctor doesn't have much time left on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm telling you guys, this is you see this story, this whole Uber thing we're talking about. The only reason I'm in this situation is because I moved to Lagos impromptu. Mm. If I had really like had it, I move I this this move to Lagos fell into my lap. But if I had planned it, there's no way I would have come here without a vehicle set up already. Yeah, it makes sense. And because sense, I have yeah. a certain standard, I'm not trying to just get any kind of brock down vehicle For real. to be moving around with. But then you end up going in brock down Ubers. <laughs> So anyways, yeah. So he, now this is like, let's say 2 a.m. at night. I've even left somewhere that I don't want to be. So I'm even like, there's no turning back. I don't even want to be where I'm go- where I'm at. So then now he's like, come and sit in the front. I'm like, are you sick? Guy, do you see me? I'm not going to sit in the front with no Wait, man. Like, are you okay? So then he's like, nah, we started fighting. And you know me, I'm like, I'll fight back with you. You're like, fighting with I'll, you? I'll, I'll go back and forth with you because like, I'm not moving to the front. Yeah, yeah. He goes, basically what had happened to him before was there was a babe that had same thing mm. coming late at night. Then what had happened was he now told she now told him to stop on the expressway that they're meeting some people, and that's how they robbed him. No way! So yeah. they robbed him. I think it happened to his friend. I should have no. It happened to his friend, and he was so scared of what happened to his friend. He said that when he at late at night, he does not pick girls. He doesn't allow girls to sit behind him. He wants girls uh, to sit in front of him. Mm. Well, I, I mean, it's it's justifiable, but still, justifiable for where. <laughs> In the end, I, I hustled him. I said, guys, I don't look like someone that's going to rob you. I, I, me, I'm very, I'm, the thing about me is you can't get me to do what I don't want to yeah, do. Yeah, if you don't want to do it, don't yeah, do it. I, yeah, nobody yeah. can force me to do what I don't want to do. So in the end, he succumbed to my thing and I became friends. I bantered with him, made him feel secure. Mm. But then it just shows again, like, that's a bit sad because apparently they did cleaned him off the car. His friend, nah. like, they wiped off the, they took the vehicle, everything. These area boys. Nah, that's wild, man. Yeah. You have to be careful in these Lagos because, boy, these Uber drivers, it's, the, the moral story is when you're coming to Lagos, make sure you sort, plan. Yourself, out, sort yourself out. Go on the blog. There's you know consultations say. that you can book as well. So we can like talk you through the yeah, process. Yeah, talk you through where to get up. a car, exactly. where to get a driver. Yeah. There's people do driving services. In fact, if you're doing driving services and you want a sponsorship, yes. I mean, hit me up, hit us up. <laughs> Because, you know, people like people need better services out there, man. God no, no, damn. it's absolutely terrible. Like, have you, um, security-wise, have you known people that have got robbed or anything? Okay, so I haven't, but I've seen a video, right, on oh. Admiralty Way. Oh. Admiralty Way of all places. A lucky one, yeah. And people, some people got stopped and then they were just literally, they were in traffic and they were just robbing them one after the other. And, and like, give me your phone, give me your money, give me this. In within the last one to two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like I, um, I've been in Nigeria for maximum what, a year and a half, so I definitely yeah, same, yeah. Really next last one to two years. So I saw that video, and, and I, that made me think, <sighs> nowhere is really fully safe, but also you need to just be smart as well with how you move. So, like if when there's traffic, don't really, don't really, you don't really want to be on the road when there's traffic no, too no, much. No, no. You know what I'm saying? You want to yeah. be, you want to be in a house or somewhere mm-hmm. stationary, and then when traffic's done continue your movement if you can yeah if you can't don't just carry valuables with you too much you yeah. understand like just keep it simple yeah 
and just yeah, maybe more about from Max. You know, let me do you know the jury that, shit. Yeah, fam, I I it's, learned that through an experience one of my London friends went through as well while visiting. Like his family were in traffic. Yeah. And um, long story short, they got robbed like in traffic. No way. And when I had my friends over the next day, and I was like, oh my god, look what happened to my friend. All of them were giving their own stories. They had the over. Yeah. So, nah. Even my cousin, so she's like a female. Like it's normal. Found out like it's normal. She was. She told me like, yeah, if a, if you're a single female in traffic, you're even the perfect target because they know they're definitely gonna get you. Mm. They'll smash your window, ask for your phone, take your phone, and she told me that she saw the same guy that robbed her selling chewing gum on the street. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, these chewing gum sellers, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these chewing gum sellers, boy. And <laughs> hey, these kids that, that that like take, you know, they put water in the thing and they start putting in your car and then, and then Oh, to clean your it. windows. There's some of them that's above the age to be doing that. And then they look so dodgy. Oh, I, I know. But so basically, I have a family member in Abuja and he told me that, yeah, like you have to be very careful because there's even a, what they can do. They might hit you. They might, um, this is so elaborate. So basically, you hit someone. Mm. They'll, someone will run in front of your car so that you, they'll think that you you think you killed someone, in it? Yeah, you come down from your car and exact, they rob you. fam. That's mad. They're running that one in the bush. I've, right I've knew that game since London, though. <laughs> all, 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 exactly. Like, all this time traveling in different countries. <laughs> I just knew if I hit somebody, I am well, not coming down. I'm parking up. Worst case, I'm parking away for the police to come and sort something. I'm not coming down. <laughs> Boy, you open your door for you know someone Bam. comes to your car and take your shit there. I'm good. Because in London, they did another one. Again, they were like, they throw eggs at your car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you think, yeah, yeah, what yeah, happened? Yeah. You come out of the car, clean, Yeah, clean. yeah, yeah. They're, but they're luckily, in. in that same situation, someone was driving behind the person. So they were like, no, 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 don't stop. This is what they do in this area. Mm. They're like, just clean your window and keep it stepping. Keep it don't come down yeah, from yeah. your vehicle. Don't be coming down from your vehicle. Listen. In life, a general safety rule, don't be coming down from your vehicle like that. Mm. Like, you're safe in your vehicle because to get into your vehicle is quite hard. Unless mm. they break it down or open the windows. Mm. But just keep it moving. That's how people, if you're in this country and, just, and you're having trouble, mm -hmm. don't open your car. Just keep driving. Mm -hmm, Find a way to mm -hmm. get out of that situation because if you're here trying to be uh, uh, all empathetic and shit, <laughs> and they're That's opening doors. That's how you get doors, your shit taken you get quickly. Shit taken. Hey, there's one time here, last bar. Okay. I'll just go say this. I was on the phone, right? Okay. But I was on the phone like this, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then he saw me on the phone. Mm -hmm. And then he was literally chasing me like this. I, I literally looked at him. I just, you know when you open your hand and the phone just slid down? <laughs> <laughs> the phone just slid down. And I just said, nigga, I ain't stopping for you. <laughs> I've done that in London with police like, before. <laughs> I just came to movie. I've done that in London before. <laughs> like, I didn't even know when my hand did this. <laughs> I was thinking, I'm thinking, if I was the car with a girl, she'd be thinking, this guy's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just kept to me because oh, I was man. like, nah, like, there's no way I'm stopping for nobody in Lagos. Even if police, wait, I'm, I'm listen, money, even, okay, I'm out because yeah. my safety is priority, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I, I honestly thank God so much that I've not had any like unsafe incidents. Mm. I've been in mad situations. I've had strangers put their hands on me before and things like that. Yeah, there was one time during COVID, some crazy man at the mall because of face masks, like he was actually like shouting at me in front of the whole mall. And I'm like, and you know, you really got an accent as well. You can't be out here talking to these people because it attracts I, attention. I'm, I'm very aggressive when someone does that, you know. No, like, I'm so really do I. aggressive. So to do the I. point that the person would be so scared. There's one time I went, oh, let me tell you this story. <laughs> I went to a supermarket, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, so basically, I'm I'm a bit, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know that. So, we know that. <laughs> so I pulled up, so I pulled up in the supermarket, yeah. And there was free parking space where you park one, two, three. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I pulled up in the supermarket and I parked across three like this. Yeah, and I just jumped out with my guy and went to the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously there's commotion going outside. We parked this car. Da, 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 da. I was inside minding my business, doing nah, my shopping. You, yeah, you caused this one. I'm not gonna lie to you. I but caused continue. It. You caused but it. But anyways, long story short, the guy, the guy. Um, so I think mean, somebody else I wanted to park there now parked outside the, the supermarket mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and walked in. So obviously he knew I walked. I parked there because he saw me parking. He saw you. So he he was he was there and he was like. And he, he know people, yeah, when they see you and they, look, they think you're a bit intimidating, they don't say it to your face, they say it underneath the tone. Mm. Then he was looking down and was like, these people are parking. No, no, no. They were just, <laughs> you know, them nonsense kind of, them low voice. Mumbling, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, what, what did you say? <laughs> you know what I was like, <laughs> you hold them Pull up on me, say it with your yeah, chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was like, he was like, yeah, yeah, and then he said, I said, so I'll, so I'll break it. <laughs> In the end, the way, the way, the whole, because yeah. the way, when I'm upset, yeah, it's like, 
my pitch goes very high and then like it's very scary because mm. I, I have a temper in it mm. so every everybody in the supermarket just went quiet and turned around and just looked that's the, I'm telling <laughs> you in Lagos you will find yourself in those situations I'm telling you because I was just, I was just so bad and then the guy that came with just tapped my children it's, 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 it's calm down that's calm down. fam <laughs> Fam, okay, so we're because that was on some London shit. Yeah, I was like, bro, same. we're going right because you know Nigerians don't really fight that much. Like they, they no, argue, they fight, but yeah. they don't really fight. They're not on it. They like yeah, to shout. They're not on it. They like to shout. They're not on it. Not, yeah. None of the people were on it. We're on it. So yeah, like yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. knew that like, this is about to but get. That's part of the problem because <laughs> yeah. then the friction. Because my one year in the whole mall in Vi, I walk in, my face mask is broken. Oh shit! Yeah, so yeah. this is like during COVID. So I'm like, I'm gonna go into the shop to buy another one. Like, guy, chill. Like, why are you? <laughs> he's bare following me into the mall. Then he starts shouting at me. Then you know when it gets bad, yeah. I'm trying to go this way. He comes this way. Mm. I'm gonna go this way. He comes this way. I you know that like, this is why I love Nigerian men. One man, he came outside the shop with a Man United T-shirt. He goes, leave her alone. And I was like, come on, my, my prince is shining armor. You know, <laughs> the prince is just. Yeah, I love. I that bet you looked at him before he was glowing, didn't he? <laughs> I love that. Joe always come to save to save their queen, yeah. So I love the energy. But then it got worse. So in the end, he's bare shouting at me. He pushed me. He touched me. Mm. And I'm like, guy, like, are you actually mad, yeah? You're trying to get onto me for COVID. What about social distancing, okay? Mm. And your BO is actually already, like, killing me. It's actually too much. I'm suffering. Take a step you back. BO I, for, did, for I, COVID. Said, I said, take a step back. I said, I don't <laughs> So then his junior, his junior even comes and said, sir, sir, like, relax, it's okay, it's okay. And he slapped, he slapped his his junior nah. in the middle of the shopping mall. And I said to him, look at what you're even doing to your own staff. So eventually, you know me, I'm hard-headed, yeah? I'm not going to back down. Mm -hmm. So eventually, I think they pulled him away. Everybody in the mall started coming to me. Sorry for the embarrassment, man. Sorry for the no embarrassment. Way. So even the security guard took me aside to come and be consoling me. Sorry for the embarrassment, man. I'm like, it's actually okay. But to me, it's like, if a guy can put his hands on a woman outside in public, only God knows what he's doing to his wife. His wife home. I these niggas are upset, man. This country, no. First thing first, yeah. If I'm the president of Nigeria, I'm, we're, we're going to be playing this game. If I'm the president of Nigeria. Okay, because calm, I think it's I'm important. Ready, yeah. If I'm the president of Nigeria, I think everybody needs therapy. Love that. They need like love. the mental health issues in this country is huge. Love. They all need literally every single person. Just open free medic, Facts. free therapy clinics, Facts. and people just walking in and walking. In fact, like, you have to get therapy yep. before you get your pension. Because <laughs> all these crazy old ass people in this country. No, but I think it's deep. I think you have to get therapy before you can start a business. I'm telling you, a lot of startup founders, yeah, they've got mental illnesses themselves. <laughs> Seriously. In fact, to, to even to even decide to open a business in Nigeria, you definitely have an issue, boy. Why are you, we're in that boat, boy. So I don't know what you're saying. Which is another topic that I actually want us to cover up on as well. Because mm. you know, recently we've seen one, two, two scandals and stuff with mm. like startup founders. And um, I was speaking to this guy in HR, and he was basically telling me because I asked him about it, and he and he made a good point. He goes, in Nigeria, we have a big problem when the owner owner manager problem. So when the startup founder is also the one that um, is a CEO mm. and he started the business, he gets his God complex because mm. already there's so much poverty when you have money, Esa, my Jisa, or this sa. So you get mm. worshipped up and down and then you see your stuff and you're like, I built this company. I own everything. So mm. you become very like micromanaging, possessive. Mm. And you see that a lot with like Nigerian like um, startup founders. Mm. So again, I still think there's a lot of training that needs to be done to make sure nah, a whole you don't develop that complex. But that's why I liked what the, that whole period of that scandal situation because yeah. it really kind of shunned everybody was checking themselves. Yeah. Right? Because I even saw among my, my peers, mm. people were like checking themselves good. to make sure that they're doing the right thing as leaders. Good. So it's, it, it was a good thing in a way. It kind mm. of had a good effect. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know if it's going to last, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe if investors in the future are going to be checking out for those cultural things. That's the thing. This is, mm. That's another thing. All the other ones, money in it. They don't really care. This man just throw money at startups here, and they're not checking like the operation. A cultural thing can cause a disaster in a startup. Facts. Like it could. People can just one day say, you know what, I'm leaving. I don't want to be a part of this nonsense, and then the whole business is done. Like there's a lot. A lot of them have high turnover. Yeah, for you, for you, for your business to have high turnover of staff in Nigeria, that means you're really doing something wrong mm. because it's hard to find youth unemployment is quite high mm. it's not easy for people to get jobs mm. so if they're leaving your job for mental health where they don't might even have somewhere to go mm. and salary is already low that means you're really 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 doing something doing wrong, stuff wrong yeah. so i agree with you like mental health training is so important and what, what, what's it what's it with like nigerian businesses and paying people late 
Oh man. Even salaries as well. Oh man, I'm telling like, you. Like, how do people survive? I'm te- fam. <laughs> when I came here and I was like to my girls, because obviously the first nine months I was here, I was just doing lockdown avoidance from mm. the UK. <laughs> so during that lockdown avoidance, I was flirting with the idea of actually moving permanently. So when I was talking to my girls that I moved back already, they were telling me, yeah, if you're gonna come here and work here, do not work for a Nigerian firm, mm. work for a multinational. Because Nigerian firm, yeah, your salary is due on the 25th. It could be one month, two months before they pay your salary. <sighs> and I know I've got Ni- I've got Nigerian Nigerian friends who they're being owed salaries. That's madness to me. So it makes me understand like what these guys are going through. And that's why I say like in the UK, we're always shouting about our privilege, mm. about white people. We want white people to accept their privilege. But in Nigeria, as diaspora, we need to accept our privilege. Yeah, true. And I really mm. want diaspora to like understand that because I can also I can see where homegrown people are coming from when they want to jump up because they can see a better life out there. And how can you tell me that my salary is due at a certain month? So, so for example, I mean, just your salary being paid on time is enough to be to look at that as a better life, you know? Yeah, yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. ignore the extra stuff. Obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're there and we're seeing the extra stuff. Yep, we've yep, been yep, there or yep. we've been there and seen the extra stuff. So yep. we're thinking we're comparing the, the external things to this, right? Yeah the second level of, of problems. But first level problems are still happening here. Facts. So they're thinking, you know what, like if my first level problem is being solved, why do I want to be here? Yeah. And yeah. I kind of get it as well. So you can kind of see where they're coming from. But yeah, they need to do better. I mean, if you're employing anyone or giving anyone any work, just do pay them on time, Facts, man. That's the minimum man. you could do. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Yeah, there's no... It's just it's just that, like you said, something that you said um, in our last episode that I felt was just so accurate. You see the rawest form of humanity here. Mm. And I think a lot of us diaspora that come back, we're actually quite human. Mm. No matter how tapped we are, and we're definitely tapped, we still have that respect for human life. Yeah, true, And true, that's true. why sometimes they even run... They, they run um, games on us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah take, take the liberties. Exactly. Yeah, don't don't fall for the for the for the uh, yeah. fear, fear fear tragics or whatever it's yeah, called. Yeah, <laughs> because the type of startup founder I am, I'm very I want to give. Mm. So I'm someone as long as you do your work good, I will spoil you. I mm. want you to be happy. I want you to because I feel like life is like even as a workaholic, I still want to have fun because I believe in balance. Mm. So I'm like that with stuff. But I've heard from other people that have come back, even like um, this one babe, she left America to come here. She did that same thing, and they run games on her really yeah. I, one time yeah um okay so this is my discipline disciplinary i have a bit of uk disciplinary and metrics okay, like where cool. you know you like nigerian people they'll beat you with a stick yeah and like yeah, be very yeah. physical i'm not doing that while uk people are more strategic about that so, so one of my uh one of my staff at the time i think he i think i talked about um what was i saying there was like um Oh yeah, there was some work to be done that day and he didn't come to the office. And I called him up and I was like, yo, like, where are you? He was yeah. like, he knew he was like, I came to the office and there was no light. And I was like, what do you mean? We're all in the office here working. What, nobody saw you here. What are you talking about? Right? Anyway, long story short, I told him to write a, a long email, five pages long. No, nah, I can't. <laughs> I cannot, man said do, li- I'm triggered. They used to make me do lines in sixth form, yeah, when I was naughty. <laughs> so I was thinking this is the most UK punishment of all time. That is the most UK punishment of all time. So, but it was, I didn't want to like make it, because there was nothing I could really, because I was so angry, but I was like, you know what? Because he's, he's, the guy is like, not, when it comes to that, he will think so much work. Mm. It, it would be painful. It would be a bit, not like physical pain. No, but it's it pain. Like, when I used to write lines, yeah, it was painful. It's painful. So I was like, write five pages document why you didn't come to the office and, five and why you're not going to pages. Gonna pay it. Yeah, he wrote, he wrote every single excuse in the world. That's like that? three, four thousand, four thousand words. <laughs> four thousand words. Nah, because then again, like, I also want my staff to be very educated. Facts. So facts, like, facts. for him to write 4,000 words, <laughs> <laughs> your education <laughs> has definitely gone up in that week, boy. <laughs> No, I've dealt with that a lot. The whole, there's no light, there's no this. But the truth is, a lot of them aren't lying. Yeah, yeah. So that's why you yeah. have a conundrum because you're mm. like, mm. sometimes you're not mad at you You see the way we used to make excuses mm. not come to work here or something in London, but it's like, with the whole not light thing, the gen is not, you know? Yeah, but they use that. The funny thing, us, yeah, we make sure like during a certain period of times, there's light in the office at all time, even if you have to on the gym because yeah. gen is very expensive, right? Mm-hmm. So the fact that He's trying to use that as an excuse. Is what pissed me off because I made sure He's a cautious I'm paying this shit. Sure. <laughs> so like, I mean, you're not working from home. You're working from the office, and I'm paying for the mm. diesel that's going to that generator, mm. right? So I was a bit like, 
a bit and I was like, bro, like, what do you mean? This is this is not how you do things. Like I'm training ooh, I call us all Spartans, innit? We, nice, we, I love that. Yeah, yeah we call us, like we're, tra- love- we're I'm training Spartans. Honestly, we're, it's we're an like, army, it's a movement. Yeah, like yeah. we're a movement, like like we're not all the other companies. I'm telling you, the reason yeah. why people rate us and people come from all around the exactly. world to come as just Nigeria. Yeah. Is because we're Spartans, so like, exactly, I love don't that. be giving no low level media, ans- media that, energy, yeah, yeah nah, 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 some nah, peasant nah. energy, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. you got you got to discipline your staff, man, because it's 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 um it's needed. Like the, the the expectations in this country is low, exactly. So you have to bring it all the way uh, up. Hi, yeah, yeah, you have to bring it all the way up. Yeah, definitely, and that it just goes back to that thing that I said at the beginning, have making them have pride in their work mm. and making them have pride in what they're doing mm. and taking them past that survival mode mentality. Because yeah, yeah. once you get past that, sky's the limit for you. Mm, yeah, true. because people always want to work with people that are good. Yeah, true. Just like Nigerians, Nigerians like fine things, they like nice things. They mm. will throw, there's so much money here. Mm. If you get it right, they'll be throwing they're money throwing at, at you. you. Yeah. You'll even start, be re- you'll be rejecting mm. jobs. So yeah, I mean, you didn't have the, the thing on the table. Well, the, 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 the card, thing. yeah. Sorry guys, we didn't have the card today, so we're going to have yeah, to just cut to little, another episode. Yeah, <laughs> that, that our little table, you know that thing I give Kun... Kunle, what's happening? Where is that? Can we get that oh, on the me. table? A little, a little bowl of bowl of questions. This is the part of the episode where we talk about questions. Yeah. Uh, or actually, we'll pick up a questions from the bowl. Yeah. A random group of questions we put together that come from the audience. Yeah. Come from us. Comes from our friends. And then we answer it. So, and guys, also send your stories in. There's a link to send your stories in or ask us questions as well. So make sure you send your stories in. Yeah. Do you spend more time with homegrown Nigerians or the diaspora? Oh my god, that's a good I like this ask one. question. I like this one. Oh man. So when I first came, I was doing Miss Friendly Friendly. You were everywhere, you know? innit? I'm Santa. very bubbly and I'm just, you know, just like a, a ball of life. And I felt like I was running into problems. So I'll split it by gender. When you want to befriend homegrown Nigerian males, it's not the same as in London because in London, men and women can be friends. Okay. In Nigeria, men and women cannot be friends. So everyone's trying to smash. Fam is so draining. And you know Nigeria too, yeah? Because of this sugar daddy culture, is young and old. And because of the sugar daddy culture, is married and single. It's just too much. Have you man not seen a babe before in your life? Like, So I struggled a lot befriending mm. males. Whereas in, in the so UK, you think all the men wanted you as a sugar baby? It's like, to me, it was just like, can you actually just, I want to get past, let's get past all that bullshit and just get to the money. The like, business, you know, yeah. I'm trying to, I have a startup. Like I'm trying to like, you know, organize some deals and do some stuff. Or if you're my male friend, you're just my male friend. Like I'm not interested in you. So do you think that as a, for a woman, mm-hmm. in order to kind of get things moving, you have to do stuff? Um, no, because I feel like I've got things moving without doing stuff. <laughs> However, it's a lot harder and it's going to move slower for you. Oh, okay. Because there's some people that are so pathetic that it's like they're not going to do the deal because you haven't spread your legs. No. Fam, I had to call one of my family members. I'm like, what's wrong with this country, man? Like, men and women can't be friends in this country. It's so draining. Like, it's so petty. I've had niggas fighting over... The f- I'm not interested in either of you and you're fighting. Like, it's... <laughs> it's- <laughs> <laughs> I'm not interested in neither of you and you're Dude, fighting just... <laughs> you know how ridiculous that looks it's terrible <laughs> and I'm there looking at these bubbles like it, never, it will be a cold day in hell before I consider either of you <laughs> and they're trying to beat each other up I'm like have you ever not seen a baby before in your life like it comes across <sighs> scary mm. so um, and I've got so many that's a conversation for now I've got so many stories on that now when it comes to befriending the homegrown Nigerian babes, mm. that one too I've tried and I'm not doing it again. Really? So what's what's like what's like what what's the typical homegrown Nigerian babe mentality? <sighs> Do we have savings for another episode? Um, <laughs> okay, so I feel like uh it's because of the culture here. Even the ones with good jobs don't see, and they, they're very entitled to other people's money. That's the entitlement. That's, yes. Okay. Entitled to other people's money, and it could be your money as a female. They'll make these comments: "Oh, you, you're earning pounds. Oh, you, you, you this rich. Oh, you, you've got money. Oh, you, this." And it's like, you keep saying those things is already telling me there's something going on here, and I feel like there's an agenda. Whereas a lot of us, being genuine, you're mm. always going to smell when someone's got an agenda. Yeah. So in the end, now. My friends, my circle is all 
if they're Nigerian, Nigerian, I met them at uni in the UK and we've maintained friendships since. I've got a healthy group like that um, that I'm still close with or the London people that have moved back. Mm. That's my main circle. Or like my cousin, shout out to Tolu. Mm. Like that's my main kind of like circle. But apart from that, like, yeah. Yeah. For, I mean, for me, um, most, okay, let's eight about... 60% of the time I'm by myself as a, as a CEO yeah, as a leader yeah, you're, always, yeah. you're always you're always alone because like, you definitely. kind of have to work and do things right? yeah. you can't bounce back mm -hmm. in other classes but I would say like majority are diasporans and also Nigerian like that have businesses in the diaspora mm, exposed Nigerians yeah, yeah exposed yeah, Nigerians yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. so yep. not just kind of like yeah, yeah. so it's kind of a mix a mix of both um the reason why I'm always I'm always a person of your environment is who you are. I'm, I always believe that your mm. environment is who you are. Mm -hmm. So I always select people in my environment and and only, only like only quality people OQP right. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I always make sure that quality people around me. People. That doesn't mean that general Nigerians are not quality, but it's just like there's a toxic mindset that a lot of general Nigerians have mm -hmm. that I don't want to adopt. Fam. It's not because there's nothing wrong with them. It's just I'm protecting myself. Fam. So yeah, I just yeah. don't don't kind of relate. But yeah. But I would say, like, overall, when it comes to, like, friends and females, mm -hmm. yeah, then 100%. Is that is that a normal thing to say with females or women? Is that, what's the, what's the right I, thing? I'm not, you know me, I'm not part of this agenda. <laughs> I don't give a damn. I'll call it, as in, like, women, female, I don't, as in, there's better, there's more problems to solve. See this new PC culture, this millennials hey, are doing I've been yeah. thinking, like, you, I know what, hey, I'm, you know what, on this point, we're going to say whatever we want I, anyway. I don't give a damn, like, literally, <laughs> honestly. Well, yeah, with females, like, you... There's kind of there's not as much diaspora females in Nigeria, and if there is, no, there's all, what? There, there is, but if there is, they're always like hidden or doing something else. Yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to kind of always put in effort and stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, I'm I'm just kind of guy that okay. So when we yeah with that, you couple you meet a couple of Nigerian mm -hmm. like, females like that, but. Most of the time is working, most of at least working class minimum, really. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm definitely like you. Like, I'm at home most of the time, but reality is you need to go out. Mm. Another thing as a girl is like, Nigeria is structured so that really you need to go out with a man all the time. That's another problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Some just, establishments don't even let you in. Mm, if, they don't, they think if, you're, if you're a girl. girls because they think, mm. yeah, because all these girls are hustling. Mm. So that's another problem because that means you need another female friend to go with. Because mm. can't, I can't have guys inviting me out and I come with other guys. Yeah. So you do need to have like your girls. Um, But for me, my girls are girls. Most, the average time I've known my friends here is like eight years, nine years. So I've been quite blessed. Oh, okay, Most cool, of my friends nice. here have known minimum like eight years. So... Mm. I've been quite blessed to not miss when I try to befriend new ones. Mm. I step back. Yeah, because yeah, you never know what the situation is. No, yeah. it, it, it is. Um, yeah, yeah it, got, it got exposed that their hearts weren't clean. So I'm good. So yeah, man. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. <laughs> Do you know what my friend said to me? Yeah, just cool. to round up. Yeah, mm. my babe. Shout out to my babe from London. Hey, she shout to out me, to her still. She said to me, "You know, your podcast is making me not want to move to Nigeria." <laughs> She said it's so insightful that I'm like, yeah, I don't see I'm cut out for this. Like, really? <laughs> <laughs> no, but let's, there's, there's good bits Shout out to Kerry. Shout out to Kerry, shout out to Kerry. But there's good bits, like it's fun. You yeah. meet cool people like us, you go hang out in a nice place, eat good food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have good music, you make good money if, yeah. you, if you're smart. Exactly. Um, you travel the world, you know what I mean? And then, for me, it's, it's perfect. Like, it's lit. I'm, yeah. I have no complaints to start. You have an adjustment period and that's what we are telling yeah, you about. We're, we're just telling you through the adjustment period. Right now, exactly. we're at the point where we've just kind of gone through through that that stage you yeah, know we're just about up. to balance out yeah it's rounding up yeah. for us yeah so it's rounding up so yeah. every everybody's got the adjustment period like that Fact. year and two year mark yeah is where you kind of encounter all this craziness mm -hmm. and then once you figure out is you that's putting yourself in this craziness yes yes and you, yes. you find ways to kind of create a sanity around you yep then it gets easier. But yeah. before that, you're going to be in a lot of shit if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't get no advice. I was just, Fam, everything was head rock. Head dumped rock. into it. <laughs> head rock. Dumped into it. Head rock. So yeah. yeah. So um, thanks guys. That's the end of this episode. So yes. check out for the next episode. We should be out soon. Yeah. You know how it goes. Every week. Deuces. All right.